going. So this is the uh, the last talk of the day for the vendor track. We've had uh, Chef, we've had Chocolatey, we've had Accenture, but uh, everybody loves Octopus Deploy. So uh, this is um, Octopus enabling a successful DevOps journey. So we're going to look into some real world case studies of UK companies that, uh, that have successfully implemented CICD processes and automation in the pipelines. We've got Derek Campbell from Octopus Deploy. So Derek Campbell's the solution architect for OD. Same format, 45 minutes, five minutes Q&A at the end. So we get going. Over to you, Eric. Cheers. Awesome. Did everybody get a raffle ticket? Anybody not get one? Because you get, uh, we're going to do a bit of a raffle for uh, some gift vouchers for some T-shirts. Um, you get, uh, you know, as we are beautifully um, modelling today. Um, so what I'd just like to do is just, um, we'll start out, uh, we'll start talking about Octopus, some of the features, what it is. Um, I'm I was trying not to make it sound like a sales presentation, but the more I tried, not to make it sound like a sales presentation, the more it actually sounded like a sales presentation. So I just want to, I'll hammer through Octopus and then we'll, we'll focus on a couple, um, we'll, we'll focus on a, a couple of clients and uh, some of them are actually in the room today. So before Octopus, um, I've had a lots of different experience. Um, I kind of started out long, long time ago um, when I had hair. Um, doing desktop support and just bit by bit and then eventually one day um, I, what I'd done was I found Octopus Deploy in Team City and at that point I was like wait a minute I don't have to copy DLL files and config files and changing connection strings on a fly wait a minute um, and since then I've been doing um, I've been around the world uh, lived in London Melbourne mostly in the agency kind of started my own business for a bit and then recently came on board in August uh, with Octopus Deploy what is Octopus Deploy? Right, is, um, is anyone not using Octopus just now? Okay, that's, that's not bad. And uh, I'd imagine the rest of these are. Um, excellent, so what is Octopus Deploy? Um, it's an automated deployment tool. Um, what you'll be able to do is promote releases between environments. It effectively um, takes any package um, if you can build it, we can deploy it. Um, and you know, what it is is, is, is it's a, I love it. Obviously, I'm you know slightly biased. Um, really, the, the, the biggest thing for me is um, with Octopus is it's really easy to use and get up and running, and you know get that first deployment um, going. And API first, um, Octopus is an API first platform. So anything you can do in the, uh, the in the GUI, you can do over an API. Uh, you know, first-class multi-tenancy support. And then this year, um, obviously, it has primarily been an on-premise product in the past. Um, but in June this year, we launched Cloud. So, integration points. Um, we're not very selective when it comes to integration. You know, ultimately, what we'd like to do is integrate as much as possible. Team City, um, Azure DevOps, or VSDS, or uh, you know, whatever they change the name to next. TFS. Artifactory, Jenkins, and, and, and so forth. So these are some, I'm, not, I'm still not quite sure how accurate these numbers are. Um, what you do with them, um, Octopus, you actually uh, have to, we have telemetry. These are the only, the, these are the statistics that we can see. We only see about 45%. Um, I expect the numbers are actually much higher than this. Um, but yeah, I mean, over 30 million deployments, uh, 22,000 22, customers uh, globally. And I actually quite like this one, um, personally, 150,000 users. That generally means, you know, you've got 150,000 people around the world that can log on to an Octopus instance, which I think is really cool. So the benefits, to be honest, I just, it's really easy to use. Um, you know, you've got build server, agnostic, you know, Jenkins, if you're using Jenkins, Good luck, um, but you know, obviously, with um, you know, it's a, a yeah, it's great. But you know, you do we do deploys on premise, public and private cloud. Um, you know, lots of different SSH targets, web apps, VMs. It's really flexible as well. And if no one, what I see is, is everybody thinks it's a .NET tool, and it's not. It started out as a .NET tool, but it does Java, um, you know, PHP databases as well. How many people are doing uh, database DevOps? 
that's that's higher than expected. That's higher than expected. That's good. But yeah, it does database. You know, uh, Paul from Octopus said he actually created DB up as well. So you know, that's a product as well. Um, fast release cycle. To be honest, for some months um, we'll have 22. Um, we'll basically be releasing per day, and uh, just to give you some, just to give you an idea um, on that. What I, like on a Tuesday, I was talking to a client, and they they, they had a bug. It happened, and it had blocked them. And what it was is we worked on it on the Tuesday. Um, the de development team is based in Brisbane. And what it was is we were able to find out it was a bug. We submitted it. I, I jumped on, spoke to the guys that night, went to bed, woke up in the morning. It was fixed. And it was on our website. It's fully automated and like that. I think that's really fast, really awesome. And I, I did see earlier on there was um, someone who was uh, doing a bit of the stand-up, you know, if you're releasing monthly. And I thought, that was really cool. how many people here are releasing multiple times per day? Excellent. Excellent. And our licensing model, <laughs> um, so obviously, I don't know how much you know, but obviously there was a recent change. I'd prefer not to talk about that just obviously just now. Um, if you want to talk about pricing, grab us afterwards. And it really does scale as you require it to. Um, for me as well, it also reduces the complexity of deployments. You know, um, taking things like load balancers out, making things a lot easier. Um, world class support. Um, I think, you know, I think our support team is fantastic because it's not just some guys on a help desk and, you know, there's nothing wrong with that, but it's the guys who actually created um, the, you know, the, the product who you're getting that, so it's really kind of world-class support. Um, custom scripts, um, database deployments, which obviously I've covered, and um, we actually, you know, I'm sure there'll be people in, the, in, in here that have actually, um, you know, what we do is, is a lot of our new features originate either from uh, community or from um, our customers. So 2018, there's two slides, it's not really a nutshell, unfortunately. But what, um, obviously, we're, this year has been a really big year for us at Octopus, mainly because I joined. Um, I'm not really just kidding. But myself and Carol joined in August, and we're, we're, we're scaling out the team. Um, you know, the product is, I started using the product back in 2013, and um, it's a completely different product, if I'm being honest. It was just .NET. Now, this year alone, uh, first class Azure, the service fabric, Kubernetes was only launched recently. We had the, the alpha in September, uh, and then full first class Kubernetes support. Octopus Cloud, um, that's going really well. Uh, obviously, we, we're doing this now as a, as a platform, as a service. Workers and worker tools. This one kind of, not a lot of people, people are using it, and, and I'm not, um, with that, is um, not as many people as I thought are actually using it. Uh, workers and worker tools are a way to, um, with a tentacle, you either normally run the task either on the tentacle or on the server. And what Worker Tools does is it, you can actually offload that so that your Octopus server is just there um, and doesn't really do any of the heavy lifting. And that, I think it's a really nice feature this year. Long-term support, that isn't, that will be released in the next week or so. Um, what we're going to be doing with that is uh, the long-term support will be, will be released every three months and it will remain in support for six months, and what that will mean is you'll, you'll have a bit more, a bit more steady. Um, a lot of people, some of our enterprise uh, customers really wanted that. Spaces, was supposed to launch in November, then it was supposed to launch in December, likelihood of January, but it's really awesome. I'm sure none of you, I'm sure some of you are aware of it, but what Spaces is gonna do is, is it's gonna be a way to separate out different um, you know, at the moment you've got different projects. Spaces is going to be like similar to Jira, where you can flick between different customers, and it separates out. You know, it separates the customers out at the database level. It's still the same database, uh, but with Spaces, it's going to just give you that kind of regulatory requirement um, and that kind of separation between um, different projects and spaces and so forth. Project coordination. This is a way to be, to run projects from within different projects, and then Terraform provider. Um, we're actually working on that, and that should release in the next one. Actually, uh, talking with HashiCorp at the moment. Anybody using Terraform? Way, I love Terraform. It's good. But 
Um, we actually, just interesting fact, we use Terraform and Octopus to deploy Octopus Cloud. Um, what happens there is, is Octopus Cloud uses a, a Terraform, um, you know, obviously with the provider, it's kind of funny that, you know, suddenly when we need to enhance more features, then suddenly it's going to be a provider. But with that, we use Terraform to spin up the infrastructure and then Octopus to deploy Octopus. Again, fun fact, I, I, think, I think that's quite cool. Right, that's it about Octopus, to be honest. Um, what I'd like to do now is focus on our customers and what it does for them. Um, and really, in ASOS and quite a lot of you, obviously, with the keynote with Ian, um, I'm not going to lie, most of this bit of it was actually written by Mr. Margaret's in the back. But I'll just give you some idea. You know, it really, I think it really just enables um, speed. And, you know, obviously, you know, the fact that you can release multiple times per day. But background here is um, ASOS have been using Octus Deploy since 2000, and fully since 2016. What we've actually saw is, is deployments, um, deployment times have really reduced drastically. Um, and I've got a pretty little graph. Um, and since since this, it's 500, half a million deployments. I think that's really cool. And um, reporting capabilities via the API. Um, it's really good because it was actually quite interesting. Um, I, I'll show you in a sec, but, and what ASOS do is, you know, Octopus is pretty much central to almost all releases. There's a few deviations from that, um, but it is the standard deployment tool across ASOS. And deployments went from hours to under 10 minutes. I'm sure, you, I think you had a different version of this. It was much prettier. Um, but as you can see, you know, as you go down to the start of 2011, um, you know, you're going through from 20, double, and then as you can see from 2016, you know, there's just so many more releases. This is the number of deployments per month. Um, and as you can see, I mean, it's barely registered on the end, and now we're up at a point where there's almost 30,000. Average deployment time, as you can see, as soon as you started, um, I don't want to claim too much here. Obviously, as you can see here, there was the deployment times, you know, the average deployment time was almost an hour, and now it's under, you know, it's about eight minutes now. I think one of the things that often is overlooked, um, particularly with Octopus, is actually the, the people side of it. You know, the, the technology is great, but it, what it also does is, what it actually enables people to do is, there's some real personal benefit. Like for instance, the reason for me was, is, is, you know, I don't like doing things. The reason I adopted it back in 2013 is I don't like doing things more than once, or more than, times let's be honest you know if you have to do it a couple of times that's fine but no, I, it's just one of those things but with the, what it's actually done here is because of the, they've standardized on octopus is that you know things are ramping up much quicker um you know it's really easy to use it scales um and that's the thing is is um chat with ian that you know they went for, to 80 teams um you know, in the space of a few years from four. Um, and also, you know, with the fact it's so versatile, applied to .NET, Java, Windows, Linux, and now ASOS have actually been key um, helping us look at the Kubernetes side of things as well. And I honestly cannot, this bit here, trust. It builds trust. Without trust, everything slows down. Everything slows down. Um, and obviously with that, you've got that decentralized responsibility. And, you know, everyone then is doing better work because, you know, they're a bit more responsible for, for that. Release management. Um, obviously that gives you the visibility. Operations. Again, that kind of operations here that really kind of ties back into the trust bit and confidence. And because it is so repeatable and reliable and consistent, you can, you know, it does go wrong occasionally. Uh, I'm not saying, you know, this won't fix everything, but what it does do is it gives you that uh, confidence, obviously things, and the rollback plan as well. Uh, that was always one of those um, things that I really liked. Partnership. So 
as it was announced earlier, I'm actually I'm a solution architect. I've got about three different job titles, to be honest. Um, one of the ones that is um, one of my favourite ones is technical account manager. What I do there is we work with uh, all of our clients, um, more of data centre level clients, um, ones that really will, you know. And what we've actually saw this year is, is there's some, been some real performance issues. And this, we've actually created this technical account manager role to make sure that these are actually being caught earlier and better. Because ultimately what we did see here is, is it, there was a lot of performance issues. Things have got better. There have been some real big performance improvements this year. But as part of, you know, I was down, um, we meet every two weeks. And because of that, we've got a partnership. And really as well as that, some of the feedback that we get from these types of customers really allows us to, like, wait a minute here, you know, we can take that feedback on and it helps us create a better product. If we create a better product, you're going to keep using it. If you're going to keep using it, then it's just going to keep getting better and better. So that, that's it there. Um, that's, so what, the next one technically isn't a fully British company. Um, Derivco are a gaming and entertainment company uh, based mainly, they've got global, they have, um, they've got a slightly different model. Um, they have been using Octobus for a long time, back when it was purple and it was horrible, but to be honest. But this is a slightly different. Um, ASOS have a fairly, a really centralised um, Octopus infrastructure. Derivco are the, the opposite. Um, they have a very distributed um, Octopus infrastructure. They have something like eight different, um, eight different instances of Octopus, mainly because of you know you Hong Kong, Taiwan, China, South Africa, um, Isle of Man. Slightly less exotic, and this is the standard deployment tool. Um, what they the what they found was it's really easy to get up and running, uh, and it's really standardised things. Very similar story in that side of things uh, from ASOS. Oh, sorry, forgot to announce. There'll be at half past four. There's going to be a fire alarm test. I was meant to tell you that at the beginning. <laughs> Obviously, yeah, the, the dashboard visibility as well was something that was key to them because they didn't really know what was deployed where. So the stats, um, they have they've scaled um, in total over 40,000 technicals. Um, and that's polling tentacles as well. Um, largest, the single instance has over 12,000 targets. Over 3,000 users globally. They're growing at a point um, roughly about about 100 users a month um, because what they do is, is the type of company that they are, they purchase, um, they purchase different organizations and they're constantly um, doing that. But just to give you an idea, they have roughly about 300,000 packages, which is crazy. Uh, 16,000 deployments per month, 400 leases per day. 400 releases per day. That's crazy. So, what I did is, um, again, similar, Derivco are uh, my um, client. Um, I work with them, again, chat with them every two weeks. And they came with a different approach. It was mostly really about quotes. Uh, I, I, they have some strict uh, regulation, uh, so I needed to be careful what I can share here. I think a lot of it was also just comes back down to ease of use, bringing down um, deployment times, you know, three weeks to three minutes. Compliance, security, that's always good. Um, with this side of things is, you know, because you can automate your compliance, um, you know, it's certainly not everything. It's, it, it, generally gets you into less trouble with security. And let's be honest, who doesn't get any trouble from security? <coughs> One of the key features that really helped out um, them was the auditing um, side of things. They went from something they didn't really know where it was being deployed, and that's one of the key features that Octopus does provide is that it's got a really strong auditing um, 
to each other. And I'd like to think as well, as obviously, you know, it is very, it is very good at, at cleaning up after itself. Again, they, they actually fly to us in Brisbane. Um, they were over uh, Anton and um, there's a few of them that fly over and we, you know, they can help shape our roadmap. So they were actually over in Brisbane. Um, they were actually over in Brisbane at the end of last month. And what it does is, 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 you know, that really does, and what I'm looking at doing is actually reciprocating that and heading over to um, Durban um, in March. You know, it's always going to be nice to get a little bit of winter sun. I have went through that much quicker than I expected. Um, do you have any questions? And, do you know what, I'm not gonna lie, I've made that recommendation. Um, well, not, that's not something that we're ever gonna do, I don't think. <laughs> um, yeah, um, any others? Uh, anything about cloud or? Yeah, sure. sure. Um, Derek, Derek, sorry, can you just repeat the question for us, please? How it in, sorry, how it integrates, um, how Octopus integrates with Azure DevOps. Um, Thank you. Yeah, sure. Effectively, what we do is we integrate um, with all the build servers, uh, and then what we do is, is the, the package that is created, at that point is then handed over uh, to Octopus, and then it takes you through, because Octopus, what we have is in, instead of um, multiple deployment processes for different environments, we have the same deployment process for all the different, uh, for, for, you know, dev, test, prod, pre-prod, production. That's one of the major benefits. But ultimately, what we just do is, is it integrates with our API and then passes over the, the, the build um, and the artifacts from that, it then takes that, and it takes you through your, um, your deployment process. You know, you can use things like Terraform, etc. you know, removing things from load balancers. Um, but yeah, so whatever you build, we take that and at that point then we can also then come back into something and then run a test suite as well. Um, or we can, you know, run, I probably wouldn't recommend running a test from Octopus. I've saw it done. Um, but yeah, so like that, you can put this in and then you can go through, you know, um, your, 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 your range of uh, testing. Any other questions? I'll ask one. Um, the uh, uh, the cloud offering. Yes. I know at the moment it's obviously uh, in a good place for kind of small to medium sized businesses. Um, where are we on kind of on the enterprise journey for that? It's it's being considered at the moment. Um, it's not in development, um, but with cloud, um, as there was always going to be some small issues as we ramped up. So we wanted to kind of focus on that small uh, to medium. And in actual fact, it will be, it will probably be March next year, uh, the enterprise cloud product will be available. Um, we are re-architecting um, some of it just now. And that's one of the reasons why we're also working with the Terraform, uh, with Terraform, uh, you know, to create the provider so that we can change some of the things there. But that will be available, and it will be a highly available architecture. It's pretty much just going to be the same. It's just going to be you know, what we have just now, but it's a highly available, more throughput. Um, but yeah, it's definitely there. And at that point, likelihood is, is enterprise will be launched. At the moment, cloud is on AWS, and we will likely, um, that will likely be, um, by the time it goes to enterprise, it will be on Azure. And Yes, um, the actual, um, at the moment, the cloud product and the on-premise, 
the most part are identical. There's some slight issues that you obviously you can't use a domain account uh, to authenticate, mainly because it's in the cloud. But what you, what you can do is use Azure Active Directory. Um, so there's ways around that. But yes, the actual feature of the cloud product and on-premise at this moment and obviously over the next you know, 69 months will be very, very similar, if not identical. So the cloud product is actually, uh, from what I understand, is more like manage instance, yeah? Yeah. It, it's not really like a SaaS product yet. Uh, is there any the plan to make it like proper SaaS, like if, uh, for example, with Travis in a, in a uh, or something like that? No, it's um, it's going to be, the way it is, is, it's basically platform as a service. Um, there's no plans to change that, the way it works just now. Um, it's We are moving it to Kubernetes. Um, but yeah, the, the likelihood is that won't change. Okay. Do you want to do your, your raffle? Yes. Yep. Does anybody not have a raffle ticket? Okay. <laughs> I thought there was one. Just give me one second. There are um, th there are uh, community based. That's one. Of, um, there are some chocolatey um, steps at the moment. It's that side of things does tend to be more community based um, at this moment in time. I would I'd, I want to support chocolatey. I love chocolatey. It's a great product, but they've just got so many other competing priorities at the moment, and there's only 45 of us, so we're getting there. But you know, certainly if you if you can, um, you know, if you want to. Uh, if you want to do some um, community step templates, give us a shout. Um, you know, we would definitely would love to do that. That's on our roadmap for next year. Um, so at the moment, what it is is um, we set a roadmap out at the beginning of each year. So this is um, what we have. We're almost at the end of this year's journey. Um, we didn't make, we didn't quite hit everything that we wanted to this year. And then um, what we do is Carl and I and the guys from the US fly over in February, um, and then we'll set out the roadmap, and then it'll be published on the site, and then you'll have a full breakdown of what is going to be released, when, or you know, within at least six weeks of a, you know, these things happen. But yeah. It's, um, there's actually going to be, there's also some um, pipeline as code, there's lots of and, and features <coughs> like that will definitely come on next year. Yeah. Any more questions before we do the raffle? No? Okay, so there's three prizes, which are uh, $25 vouchers to receive one of the amazing t-shirts that Derek and I have. There are others yeah. available. There as are. Well. There's four. Actually, there's four. So you might win three times. Okay, you choose the first one. Hang on. You hold those. Appreciate. <laughs> and the winning number is. Uh, why is this so fidgety? Fifty-two. Fifty-two. Oh, look at that! <laughs> Big round of applause for fifty-two. If you can come forward, get your prize. And if you can choose the next one, please. Oh, the suspense. 31. 31, are you here? Oh, here we go. Big round of applause. Number 19. <laughs> Who's 19? There you go. Thanks, Derek.
Thanks very much. That's it, all done, yeah. Give yourselves a round of applause, thank you. Right, thank you all, that is it for the vendor track. There's one more talk in the other room, so hope you enjoyed it. That's all from us, thank you very much, cheers.